Welcome to week 11 of Explore the Bible, continuing in the Gospel of John, and really uh, some stories here that kind of match up and go one after the other. We'll be in chapter 9. Hey, you need to read all of chapter 9, okay? You need to read everything before you get to this verse 24 uh, to get the what's going on in this story, that's for sure. Before we look at the passage, be sure and subscribe to our channel, like, comment, share, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, we're growing the channel. Appreciate all of you who watch every week. Uh, let's look at John chapter 9. So a second time they summoned the man who had been blind and told him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether or not he's a sinner, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind and now I can see. Oh, that's a good line. That ought to be in a song or something, don't you think? Hey, <clears throat> the story is the man's born blind. Jesus heals him. And... Um, he the the Pharisees these leaders right they find out about it they bring him in they ask him you know who is this guy he's like I don't know maybe he's a prophet they go get his parents they call him in or was he really born blind you know what happened they're like we don't know what happened I mean he was there he he was blind born blind but now he can see you know we don't know what's going on so they call him back again and and they're like look you need to tell us the truth you need to give glory to God here in the sense of you need to say something that will honor God okay. Because uh, we know that this man is a sinner. We know this guy who did this, he's a sinner. Now, we haven't caught him in any sin, but we know he is a sinner, okay? They've got their, their judgment of him, and he said, well, I don't know about that. I don't know if he's a sinner or not, but what I know, I was blind, and now I can see. That's what I know. This is his testimony. His testimony is, I, I can't tell you anything about the guy. I don't know who he is. I, I've never seen him obviously, right? Blind. But what I do know is this. I was blind, and now I'm not. That's what I know. Your testimony is just what God has done in your life. It doesn't have to be, you know, elaborate and long. It doesn't have to be uh, this, this terribly fancy thing. You don't have to create terrible things that happened to you before. If you just were grew up in church and and uh, you figured out you were a sinner and you needed Jesus to forgive your sin and give you eternal life, there's your testimony right there. There you go. You know, that's it. It's all I got. It's just, I don't know, but I was blind and now I can see. He spoke the truth to them. He gave glory to God. They didn't like what he had to say. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? How, tell us, how did he do it? He says, I already told you. And you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You don't want to become his disciples too, do you? <laughs> you tell you, this makes them so mad. They are so mad at him because he's just kind of making fun of them, you know? <laughs> he says, I I've told you. you. You keep wanting to hear it over and over again. Y'all want to be his disciples? Is that what, that's what's going on? You're wanting to follow him too? And they ridiculed him. You're that man's disciple, but we're Moses' disciple. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but this man, we don't know where he's from. Okay, we've seen this for a few weeks now, right? This whole argument about knowing where he's from, and now they're admitting we don't know where this guy came from. I mean, they know he's born in Nazareth, but they don't know where he came from. Where, what? We don't know, but we follow Moses, right? You follow him, but we're going to follow, follow Moses. We're Moses' disciples. Well, this is an amazing thing, the man told them. You don't know where he's from, and yet he opened my eyes. They had this man born blind is teaching these Pharisees and these uh, religious leaders. He's teaching them. He is speaking boldly, forthrightly. I think the Spirit is giving him words to say at that moment. There's a lesson here about, you know, sharing your faith and talking with people about Christianity and you know, sometimes you say, well, I don't want to get into those conversations because I'm afraid I may not have the answers. We're talking about a guy that ought to be intimidated. In fact, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to intimidate him, and he is not afraid of this moment. God, I believe the Spirit is giving him the words to say, the way to respond to them. Because look what he says. He says, you don't know where he's from, and yet he opened my eyes. But we know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his will, he listens to him. Throughout history, no one has ever heard of someone opening the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he wouldn't be able to do anything. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, if he's not from God, how is he able to do anything at all? Especially restore sight to a man born blind, which has never happened before. 
you were born entirely in sin, they replied, and you are trying to teach us, then they threw him out. Okay, it's, it's an interesting statement on a couple of levels. Number one is that when the disciples first encounter him, if you go back to the beginning of the story in, in uh, John chapter 9, you go back to the very beginning, when they, when they meet him in verse 2, the disciples ask Jesus, who sinned that this man or his parents that he was born blind? Whose sin is it that caused this? Because yeah, that, that was the assumption. And Jesus says, wasn't anybody's sin. This happened so that God could gain glory. All right? Uh, so what you think it is about is not what it is about, number one. Okay? Number two, <clears throat> they were born in sin too. <laughs> but they're better than him in their minds, right? So we still have this human judgment thing going where they look at him and they're like, who are you to talk to us like this? You're a sinner and we are religious leaders. Well, yeah, well, you're sinners too. You know, you've got, you've got your sin as well. There are things that you've done as well. And boy, the, this high and mighty attitude is just, they're throwing it around all over the place. And it's interesting because they, they admit they don't know anything about the guy. They don't know where he's from. That's what he says. You don't know where he's from, but he opened my eyes. I mean, there's something to it, right? And, you know, if he was a sinner, why would God listen to him like that? You know, because this has never happened. How, how could, He wouldn't be able to do anything. He, he must be from God. He, if this man were not from God, he wouldn't be able to do this. He must be from God. You say you don't know where he's from, but it appears clear that he must be from God. <clears throat> well, they're tired of dealing with this guy. You're you're just nothing but a sinner. Who are you to teach us? Who do you think you are? Get out. I think part of it, he's like, well, y'all brought me in. You know, I don't want to come to begin with. Uh, so they kick him out, right? Jesus heard they'd thrown the man out. And when he found him, he asked, do you believe in the Son of Man? Jesus heard about what had happened. And he went and found the guy. He went and found him. And he says, do you believe in the Son of Man, which is the Messiah? Well, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? He asked. Jesus answered, you've seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. It's me. And look at this man's reply. I believe, Lord, he said, and he worshiped him. I believe, Lord. He calls Jesus Lord, and then he worships Jesus. He doesn't just thank him. He doesn't just show appreciation. He falls down and worships Jesus. Clearly, this man, not one of the disciples, this man born blind, he has this certainty that Jesus is God. And he, he gives to him what we should only give to God. He worships him. It's more than just saying thank you. It's more than just gratitude. It's more than just, um, man, you're a great, great guy. He worships him. Immediately falls down on his face before the man who worships him. This, you know, Thomas waited until after Jesus was resurrected and then appeared again and showed him his hands and his feet. And then he said, my Lord and my God. Um, you know, the disciples were slower than a lot of the other people around. Um, and, and the innocence of a guy who just says, look, one thing I know, I was blind and now I see. That's what I know. I was blind and now I see. And so I believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. That's a great story, isn't it? I don't know if we ever thought about how this guy is one of the leaders of those who come to know Jesus as Lord, call him Lord, who worship him early on. Uh, much like, you know, we'll go back and think of the shepherds. We'll go back and think of the the wise men who come, right? There have been people all along that were the unexpected ones who came and worshiped Jesus. And this is another one of those. Thanks for watching. I hope it helps as you study, as you uh, prepare uh, to teach. God bless you for that. Thank you so much for subscribing, like, share, comment, questions, answers. We appreciate all of that. We'll see you next week.